Hello and welcome to VIP Access, coming to you live and direct from Nairobi this week. I am at ALN, which is uh, one of Africa's biggest and most renowned low farms. Today we're here for the launch of this book, The Asian Aspiration, which has been co-authored by former Excellency, uh, the President of Nigeria, Obasanjo. It's an honor to be here and uh, right about now I'm about to sit down with the former President, former uh, military head of state of Nigeria. We'll be talking to him in regards to him co-authoring this book called The Asian Aspiration. How and why Africa should emulate to be like Asia and also reasons as to why there are certain things that Asia has achieved that Africa should not attain to achieve. How are you, sir? Thank you very much. I'm very fine, my dear. Okay. Yourself? I'm very fine, thank you. And I would just like to first welcome you to my country. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you very much for coming to load this book here. How do you feel? It's a, a pleasure to be here. And because um, when you get here, when you come here, you get the, proverb, the proverbial caribou. Uh -huh. mm. In a nutshell, why and how should Africa emulate Asia? Well, <clears throat> nothing succeeds like success. And there's no doubt that economically, most of the Asian countries have succeeded, beginning with Japan, um, then much later, those who came up after the Second World War, in fact, after independence, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia can be regarded as making uh, good progress. South Korea. Now, there must be something that they have done right that led to their success. What have they done right? And of course, it would be wrong for any person or any country or any organization to say I will copy w one other person or one other country or one other organization, lock, stock, and barrel. But look at what they have done. Are there something that you can take and copy or adopt or adapt? And this is what, in the first instance, recommend to us in Africa to look at what those countries in Asia have done. Of course, the situations are not the same. Um, but again, their own situation, what is it that is different from us? What have they taken advantage of? What can we take advantage of? What have they done that we should avoid? What have they, what have we not done that we should have done? Yeah. Uh, and this is uh, really what it is, the book is all about. Also, uh, success stories in Africa. There are areas where Africa is do, doing well, okay? We can say, yes, Africa is doing well here. Africa is doing well there. No. Uh, but there are also many areas where we can do better than we are doing. And that's what we are saying. All right. Thank you. So this book has been co-authored uh, also by uh, former Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Helen Miriam, and uh, the economist Emily, and also Greg Mills from the foundation that has published this book. How long did you um, all take to come up with this book? I know there was a lot of traveling, well, a lot did, of research. Did, yeah, well, it, it took us about uh, two and a half years. Okay. Um, a lot of traveling, a lot of interviews, about 400 interviews all together. Um, some of the interviews were done by the four of us uh, together. At the end of the day, we had a draft, yeah. which was subjected to a thorough critique. Uh, and then what uh, has come out, of course, we the authors accept some responsibility. But the, the, it is a book that has gone through the crucible, uh, to put it that way. So um, we, we recommend it to people, and you said you will read it. Please read it. And if you have comments or any point that you will want uh, to take up, um, please take it up, because 
we will have other additions, uh, later additions. We, we can make correction. What are some of the recommendations on uh, reading Africa of um, unemployment that we have in the book? Because we can um, constantly see that the population is growing and more and more so are the young people who are the most employed and at the task um, labor force. Unemployment rate is quite high in each and every country. Like if I look at Nigeria, if I look at Kenya, you know, we want to raise the GDP, but how do we do this? What, what are some of the recommendations in the book? Uh, well, I think the major recommendation is that it cannot be business as usual. Now, if, uh, and this is uh, the situation for almost all African countries, we will, by the year 2050, almost all African countries will have doubled their population from what it is today. Uh, Kenya will be close to 100 million from about 50 million it is today. Nigeria will be close to 450 million from about uh, 210 million that, you, that it is today. Um, and that goes for all African countries. So. Do you think it would be correct to say like family planning and contraception is one of the key elements to unlocking well, there, 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 this there, issue? There will be uh, what I call population management. Uh, we have to manage our population. Um, we have to educate. We have to innovate. We have to uh, be mindful of technology. Um, there is relevant technology that can take care of what we need today. We need real disruption of status quo and doing something that is spectacular, that will give millions and millions of jobs. I come from um, the background of entertainment and uh, the creative sector. Um, what do you think is the role of the creative sector to also unlocking oh, yes, you know, the economy? I, you know, I come from a country of Nollywood. Yes, now we can, have, <laughs> we can have many more of uh, uh, people in Nollywood and uh, uh, the, the entertainment, uh, the creative uh, um, um, sector, sector the uh, hospitality in yeah. industry, all these are industries that have not really been touched to, in terms of uh, being able to uh, create jobs. Yeah. Um, then there is tourism, which is also a bit tied to entertainment and, and uh, hospitality. Now, uh, 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 so when I talk of uh, disruption, one is the area of uh, uh, agribusiness, from equipment that we use for land preparation up to the food on the table, the value chain. We have 60% of arable uh, land in the world. In Africa, what are we doing with it? We can make use of it. When you're not traveling, when you're not working, when you're not authoring books like this, what kind of music do you listen to? Are there particular artists that you like? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, a little bit Catholic in my, in my music. I listen from uh, uh, classic to Bob Marley to... Uh, uh, the local juju in Nigeria, and to uh, the latest ones, uh, the rappers, and uh, they listen to all of them. Any particular artists that you listen to? In, in, the, new in the, the new kids, there's uh, one Kigo, in, uh, he, he's, uh, I think he's from Republic of Benin. Uh, he, she sings with a little bit of... Oh, Angeli Kijo. Yeah. She sings with a little bit of uh, French, a little bit of Yoruba, a little bit of... Uh, um, uh, she actually has a collaboration with Yemi Alade uh, called Shekere. They've shot the video in Kenya. Yeah, you, are, uh, <laughs> you, you know them because you are in the, in the same business yes. with them. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. It is an honor. Um, we're going to start reading this book and a lot of you can actually find it. It will be available all over Africa.